So today we're going to learn about a process that is known as doping. So what is doping? Um, doping is a process in which you add small amounts of impurities or foreign atoms to a base of silicon or it can also be germanium. Um, and that creates what is called either an N-type semiconductor or a P-type semiconductor. So this is used in making chips a lot of the time. Um, and semiconductors are usually made out of silicon, so that's why I'm going to use it as an example today. So we have first N-type semiconductors, and then we have P-type semiconductors. Um, and these two work in fairly different ways. So let's first talk about the n-type semiconductor. So how that works is you have your base of silicon, and silicon has, let's see, 14 electrons, so that means that it would fill up shells 2, 8, and then 4 in the outermost shell, so it has 4 valence electrons. And what we do um, to create, to dope our silicon, to create an n-type semiconductor, is you add something like phosphorus, or maybe even arsenic, or something, anything that has five valence electrons. So if we add our phosphorus here in orange, it has five valence electrons, so one more than the silicon does. And the idea behind this is that there's gonna be one extra electron to roam around. So one electron that's gonna be able to roam freely in the lattice. And that's because when the silicon and the phosphorus try to bond together, there'll be something for um, this electron to bond to, something for this electron to bond to, something for this electron to bond to, and even for the one out here. But there's gonna be nothing for this extra electron to bond to, and that's gonna create this one extra electron that's gonna be roaming freely inside, the, inside of the lattice. And you only need a little bit of the phosphorus impurity in order to get that free electron moving. Um, so we get this net negative charge, um, and this is gonna actually help create a better conductor. So that negative charge is going to get the charge flowing more, um, creating a stronger conductor. A p-type semiconductor, on the other hand, works pretty differently. So instead of doping silicon, I could draw it again, here's our silicon with the four valence electrons. Instead of doping it with phosphorus or arsenic like we did before, we would dope it with boron or something like gallium. And this is because these, unlike the n-type semiconductors that had five valence electrons in the thing we were, um, you, in the impurity we were adding, here there's only three valence electrons. So we add our boron, but this time, because there's only three, one of silicon's electrons is not going to be able to form a bond. So here we see this one would be happy, this one would have something to bond to, and so would this one. But there's going to be essentially a hole right here because this silicon's, um, one of silicon's valence electrons is not going to have um, a valence electron on the boron for it to bond to. So that's going to create a hole. And a hole is essentially the lack of an electron. And a lack of negative charge can be thought of as positive charge. And so because there's this hole, these holes are actually really good at conducting. So they're good conductors. And this is because the electrons can move really easily in and out of holes. So they can come in and they can come out, creating a movement of current. They can also accept electrons from neighbors, which is making it a really good conductor. So in general, these are the two different ways of doping to create either an N-type semiconductor or a P-type semiconductor. It all depends on the number of valence electrons of the impurity that you're adding. If it has five valence electrons, um, creating an extra electron, then it's going to be N-type. But if it has only three valence electrons or the lack of one electron creating a hole, it's going to be a P-type semiconductor.